hello guys and welcome back to the channel so guys we're back on the shore narrative again the only story in town really in the nigerian space so we're back in that space with that guys i bring you this presidency speaks on dss attack on shore in court fingers nandi kano so that's the headline presidency speaks on dss attack on shore in court fingers nandi kano so now let's see now how they are going to pass the blame on to the Igbo leader, the Nigerian presidency has finally reacted to the recent fracas between officials of the Department of State Services DSS and former presidential candidate slash activist Omoyele Shoure. It was recalled that Shoure was attacked, strangled and forcefully arrested by DSS officials in a high court in Abuja last week. Below is a statement signed by presidential media aide Gaba. Shehu. The presidency notes some of the insinuation in the media about the arrest by the Department of State Services DSS of the agitator Omayele Shoure. So already they are qualifying him as an agitator. So now that of course allies with their treasonable felony charge. So it carries on. The DSS does not necessarily need the permission of the presidency in all cases to carry out its essential responsibilities that are laid down in the Nigerian constitution, which was the foundation for the restoration of democracy in our country in 1999. However, it should not surprise anyone who has followed his actions and words that Shoure is a person of interest to the DSS. Shoure called for a revolution to overthrow the democratically elected government of Nigeria. He did so on television and from a privileged position as the owner of a widely read digital newspaper run from the United States of America. He founded an organization, Revolution Now, to launch, in their words, days of rage with the publicized purpose of fomenting mass civil unrest and the elected administration's overthrow. No government will allow anybody to openly call for destabilization in the country and do nothing. Mr. Shoure is no ordinary citizen expressing his view freely on social media and the internet. He was a presidential candidate himself who ran and lost as the flag bearer of the African Action Congress in the February 23rd general elections. Nigeria's democracy was a long time in making and was achieved after decades of often harsh military-led overthrows of government, the kind of situation Shoure was advocating. To believe in and desire armed revolution is not normal amongst human rights activists as Shoure has been incorrectly described. So now I'm not aware that Shoure has ever expressed a desire for armed revolution. This is news to me. So perhaps he may have said it and I have not come across it, but certainly I have no awareness of Shoure ever asking for or calling for armed revolution in Nigeria. So this is certainly something that is just now coming into the public space, if at all it is indeed true, but we carry on. Again, it is no surprise that he should be a person of interest to the DSS. Nigeria is already dealing with an insurgency that has left millions of people displaced and desperate in the northern regions of our country. The Boko Haram militants who are behind the violence also fancy themselves to be fighting for some sort of revolution. Nigerians do not need another spate of lawlessness and loss of lives all in the name of revolution especially not one that is orchestrated by a man who makes his home in far away New York and who can easily disappear and leave behind whatever instability he intends to cause. To wit, Nandekano, this is a matter for the DSS acting under its powers. So, to wit, Nandekano is the reference. So what they are saying essentially is that they are going to detain Shoure within the Nigerian space because when they granted Nandekano bill, he managed to find his way out of the country to be seen no more and to continue to agitate from outside of the country. And we are now seeing all this manifest in all of these attacks that are all the po all these politicians are getting in uh, foreign uh, climes. So this is really what they are referencing 
with the two wit Nandekano, but of course Nandekano did not voluntarily leave the Nigerian shores. No, no, no. Nandekano was in a restive state in his father's compound when the compound was surrounded by armed men sent by Malam Buhari and his uh, team to go and forcefully take this guy and hopefully not alive. So of course the guy then had to run for his life because of course he's not going to sit down there and just sit back and wait to be shot by the Malamis. He's not going to do that because he was presenting himself to court and he was making his voice known within the Nigerian space to agitate for what he feels were the rights of his people or the wrongdoings towards his people which is something that you are within rights to do. So that reference to Nandekano is actually uh, a, a misnomer, it's a, it's a faux pas, it's an error in wit on the part of this guy to say to wit Nandekano because if we were to wit Nandekano then we see again that this is a recurring decimal, this sort of intolerance of dissenting voices within the Nigerian space and the treatment that they get because of course we saw the treatment that Nandekano got that led to him then uh, feeling the need to escape the country. If you read the narrative of how that guy Nandekano escaped that country, it is quite harrowing and it's quite uh, a, a life challenge, it's a life risk, he risked his life to escape that country. So of course you would not take that level of risk if you do not feel that the circumstances that you're in is uh, endangering your life in the first instance. So to say to wit, uh, to Nandekano is just really uh, maybe this guy trying to be too clever by half or whoever wrote it thinking that they're going to use witty language but then of course the wit that they're trying to use is perhaps beyond their cranial function because to say to wit Nandekano would then refer us to Nandekano and when you refer us of course to Nandekano then we then of course then rehearse again in our minds what happened to Nandekano and what led to his escape and then we see that repeating again with uh with uh so we're in now so that hardens the fervor more rather than douse anything and this guy to my understanding has never ever asked for any uh, armed anything against the state but you can already now see the sort of case that they're going to prepare against him what evidence of that they're going to present is now something that we have to wait and see of course because this is a narrative really that does not hold water uh to any reasonable person or anybody of reasoning but then of course from all of the things that we've been hearing already in recent months especially in recent days with people now telling us that uh, what we saw in the courtroom that drama that played out was actually orchestrated by Shawore and another so you can already see the direction of travel so Nandekano was perfectly right to escape and uh, Shawore is really in mortal danger is really the reading of this especially when they are now saying that he was advocating for armed struggle and they are now describing it as treasonable felony so if you look at those two elements then they are only really leading in one direction and that, that direction is to make your heart skip with fear conversations in the comment section they continue to come up with all this laughable thing to wit Nandekano so they are now lumping them together this is effectively what they are saying so it's the narrative now of the Igbo man and the guy from I think is either from Delta or Ndo State I'm not quite sure where uh, um, Omoyele Shore is from I am of view that he's from he's an Ijo man this is my understanding but some people feel that he's uh, from Ondo State whatever um, wherever he's from Come share thoughts about uh, this latest developments with me in the comment section. But before you do this, click on the red subscribe button so it turns grey. Bell button notifies you every time I uh, drop a new video. Then come tell me what you are making of the life and times of Omayeli Shore in the comment section. So I'll leave you here. Join in the comment section. But here I say peace.